and Dog Pound. I'm Unger to the Max, coming at you with today's episode of the Sports Room Talk Show here on the Unger to the Max YouTube channel. A salute to you. Fire Joe Woods. Fire Joe Woods. How do you blow a 13-point lead in the final two minutes? That was unacceptable on Sunday. Absolutely unacceptable. You're coming off of a huge emotional win in week one against the Carolina Panthers, where you hadn't won a season opener since 2004. And now you have the opportunity to go 2-0 and for the first time since 1993. You are up, I believe it was 30-17. to I didn't get to see the game at all on Sunday because I was dealing with my grandma Marsha's funeral and everything that comes along with that. So, I didn't get home until around the final minute of the fourth quarter. So, I did get to see Jacoby Brissett leading our offense down into field goal range before he threw the interception that all but sealed it. But seriously, I think I saw the Browns had... A 30 to 17 lead in the final two minutes, and they had about a 99.7% chance of winning. And if I'm getting some of these details wrong, again, forgive me. I was not able to watch the game, and I refuse to watch highlights because I don't want to give myself that type of pain. And I had DVR'd the game. I like to DVR every Browns game, actually. But if they lose, I don't even go back and watch it. I go on to my DVR and delete it. So, I still have, since we won week one against Carolina, I still have that game. I need to actually go back and watch it. Um, which, I'm maybe we shouldn't have won that game, I'll admit it. That roughing the passer penalty, even as a Browns fan, I questioned that call, like... Was that really roughing the passer? I think we might have gotten lucky on that one. And so whatever. I'm I'm not going to bear I'm not going to babble on the past too much. So this week we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers come to come into town. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do a video collaboration with a Steelers fan this week. It's kind of tough cuz I've got the shivas during the afternoon and in the evening. Although tomorrow is our last day for shiva and we're only doing an evening shiva. So maybe, hey, Steelers fans, I have time tomorrow afternoon to do a video collaboration. And I should be free tonight around 9 p.m. So any Pittsburgh Steelers fan... That is free and can, can can do a video collaboration with me. Write it down in the comment section of this video. If you're watching. Which hopefully you are. And to everybody who subscribed. After watching me on that Carolina Panthers video collaboration that I did for week one. I appreciate it. To all the Panthers fans. Who, uh, who were on that video collaboration. Thank you again for having me on. Um, by the way, I'm not actually a Houston Rockets fan, in case you were wondering. I like to collect a piece of memorabilia from every arena that I go to. And so when I went to Toyota Center, I decided to purchase this Houston Rockets hat. So, Thursday Night Football, we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers coming to town. Right now, I would say Steelers-Browns or Browns-Steelers, however you want to say it. In this particular case, it would be Steelers-Browns because the game is in Cleveland. When the two teams play each other in Week 18, it's going to be Browns-Steelers because the game will be at Acrisure Stadium in Pittsburgh. Which, that's such a stupid name. It's, it's still Heinz. It should still be Heinz Field. And, uh... The two giant ketchup bottles should still be on top of the scoreboard. But whatever. Anyway, so... 
if the defense plays like that, like it did in the final two minutes against the Jets, again, this Thursday against Mitchell Trubisky and the Steelers offense, this is what I'm going to be saying from my seat at First Energy Stadium on Thursday. Fire Joe Woods. I completely screwed that up. My bad. Let me try that again. Fire Joe Woods. There we go. Fire Joe Woods. Fire Joe Woods. It would be hilarious if I actually got the whole stadium to start chanting that with me. I doubt I will, but hey, stranger things have happened. By the way, I need to finish season four of Stranger Things. I heard they're coming out with season five, and then that's going to be it for the show. So, yeah, I def I just, I finished, I did watch season, or episode one of season four. So, I'm not totally, totally behind. But, um, looking at the rest of the NFL, I'll tell you what. If you would have told me that on Sunday, you could be getting the game of the year. In week three, I would have said, you're crazy. And for that matchup to be the Buffalo Bills against the Miami Dolphins at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida, or I'm sorry, Miami Gardens, Florida, to be specific, I would have said, wow, you're way off your rocker. But yeah, I you can make a solid argument that this AFC East showdown between the Bills and Dolphins on Sunday could be the game of the year. And that's saying a lot because we've also got Packers at the Buccaneers this week. Let's see. What other match intriguing matchups do we have? We got Steelers-Browns, but even as a Browns fan, I'm like, nah, it's it doesn't get me all excited and fired up. Do I want to get the bad taste out of my mouth from last Sunday? Yeah, but, like, T.J. Watt's not going to be out there for Pittsburgh. Ben Roethlisberger's retired. So I feel like the matchup with the Steelers has lost a little bit of its luster, if you will. So let's see. What other matchups are interesting? We've got Raiders-Titans. That could be interesting. Both teams are 0-2. So somebody's getting their first win. Raiders are currently favored by two. Ravens-Patriots. I like that matchup. It's going to be the Patriots' home opener. Baltimore is currently favored by three. Um, the Ravens obviously want to get back on track after the Dolphins came back to beat them last week. This is actually the third consecutive AFC East game for the Ravens because they started this season at... MetLife Stadium against the New York Jets and then last week they played the Miami Dolphins and now this week they're playing the Patriots. So all they'll have left is the Buffalo Bills. We've got the Eagles and the Commanders. As of right now, Philly looks like the best team in the NFC. We had Last night we had two Monday Night Football games. It was Vikings-Eagles and Titans-Bills. Did we we might have gotten a preview of what's to come in Super Bowl 57 between the Bills and the Eagles. Now, I know it's only week three, so I could be jumping ship really early. Or not jumping ship, I'm sorry. Jumping the gun, I should say, really early. I get that. But, oh man, the Bills looked so, so good last night. They put up. 41 points, and I thought Vikings-Eagles was going to be a fantastic matchup. I really liked what I saw from the Vikings in Week 1 against the Packers, and I know the Lions came back and nearly beat the Eagles in Week 1, but still, to put up 38 points in a game is very impressive for any team, against any team as well. Like, this is the NFL, where it's meant to be difficult. So, like, it's not meant, you're not meant to blow out your opponent like 45 to nothing, 
or 24 to 7. I feel like with the NFL, you're meant to get like these 23 21 type of game or, you know, like a 31, like what we saw on Sunday with the Browns and Jets, 31 30, that type of game. Sure, it shouldn't have come down to that. The final score should have been 30 to 17 Browns, but, you know, I want Joe Woods' head on a platter after that. But whatever. Okay, maybe that was a little extreme. I apologize. But you get my point. Rams, Cardinals. Rams should win that game fairly easily. Yeah, Arizona was able to come back and beat the Raiders in overtime last week. But still, I wasn't impressed with Arizona. Falcons, Seahawks. I think the Seahawks should win that one fairly easily. Um... Hopefully, I can catch some of that game because we play the Falcons next week. So, Sports Live in the ATL, I'll see you next week. Packers, Buccaneers, Mike Evans, as of right now, is suspended for that game. So, who's Tom Brady going to throw to? Because Chris Godwin's probably not going to play. It's not close to Halloween, so I don't expect to see Gronk. Uh... As I said, Mike Evans is suspended. So, although he's appealing that suspension. So, who's Tom Brady going to throw to? And the Packers were able to bounce back, and they beat Chicago last week. 49ers Broncos, that's the Sunday night game. Trey Lance is injured, broke his ankle, so Jimmy G is back in control. So... 49ers are going to be boring, and I don't expect them to do much. Broncos, I have no idea what what to make of the Denver Broncos. That week one game against Seattle, what the heck was that? Like, that was some of the worst clock, clock management I have ever seen. Actually, no. I'm going to say it outright. That was the worst clock management I have ever seen. Period. End of story. Not even close. That was the worst clock management I've ever seen. What? Why'd you wait till 20 seconds to call a timeout? And then, you know what? I We traded a lot of the future to go get Russell Wilson. And we just gave him a massive contract. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send out my kicker to try a 64-yard field goal. In what universe does that fucking make sense. In what universe? Tell me. Because I don't know. That was what, that was one of the worst coaching deci- moves I've ever seen. Flat out. It was the worst clock management I've ever seen. And that's easily top three but for me of worst coaching coaching decisions of all time. For me, personally. Um, everything with 28 to 3 is number one, and I would say number three, uh, Super Bowl 54, Kyle Shanahan. So, Kyle Shanahan, you're responsible for two of those. Um, Kyle Shanahan is 100% the reason why the Atlanta Falcons lost Super Bowl 54. I know you had, or I'm sorry, not Super Bowl 54, I meant Super Bowl 51. Hey, I get the two confused because Kyle Shanahan was the head coach for the is the head coach for the 49ers, and he's the one that decided. You know what? The running game is working, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give the ball to Jimmy G, and he's gonna throw us to Super Bowl to a Super Bowl championship. And Kansas City was like, "Okay, um, thank you for handing us Super Bowl 54." And then in Super Bowl 51, I, yeah, I know Tom Brady and Bill Belichick were on the other side. I know. I get it. Not to take anything away from Tom Brady. He is the GOAT. Although for me, Tom Brady did not solidify himself as the GOAT until he went left New England, separated himself from Bill Belichick, went down to Tampa Bay, and won a Super Bowl. In his first year. He did not. That's what cemented him as the GOAT for me. It wasn't 28-3. to 3, 
It wasn't Super Bowl 49 because he, the Patriots should should relinquish that Super Bowl. I'm sorry, but the Deflate Gate, the cheating, yeah, just like with the Houston Astros. I'm sorry, Houston, you did not win that 2017 World Series properly. You should vacate that World Series. I don't care. You can call me salty, but I'm saying that not even as a Cleveland Guardians fan. I'm just saying that as a Major League Baseball fan. Houston should have, Commissioner Rob Manfred should have put his foot down and said, You know what, Houston? I'm taking your 2017 World Series away. And Roger Goodell, I'm sorry, but you should have punished the Patriots more for Super for Deflate Gate in Super Bowl 49 and said, you know what, New England? I'm taking away your Super Bowl championship for 2014. And on that note, I get the argument for, like, the Rams should be considered 2022 champions, being part of the 2022 championship club. Because Super Bowl 56 happened in February of 2022. However, I say that they belong in the 2021 championship group. So that would be 2021. Who won the Stanley Cup? Oh, Tampa Bay. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks. And who won the World Series? Atlanta Braves. And yeah, so the I put the Rams with the Bucks, the um, the Rams, the Bucks, and the Lightning, and the Braves. Yeah, I think I said that right. I think. Let me try that again. I put the Super the Super Bowl Fifty Six champion Rams with the Milwaukee Bucks, the Atlanta Braves. And the Tampa Bay Lightning. As the class of 2021 champions. There we go. Okay. So. Super Bowl 55. Okay. So that would be. Yeah. Super Bowl 55. I would say that was 2020. So. I would pair the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With the Los Angeles Lakers. The. Oh who won. Los Angeles Dodgers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Then Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl 54. I would put them with 2019. So that would be the Toronto Raptors. The Los... No, 2019 was the Washington Nationals and the St. Louis Blues. Okay. Super Bowl... What was that? 53. Yeah, the Patriots. I would put them with 2018. So that would be the Golden State Warriors. That would be the uh, Boston Red Sox. And that would be the Washington Capitals. Uh, Super Bowl 57. Oh, who was Super Bowl 57? Oh, we haven't had Super Bowl 57 yet. My bad. Wow. That's this year's Super Bowl. <laughs> My mistake on that one. Sorry. Uh, so, Super Bowl 52. Oh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, before we get into the Super Bowl, it's actually funny. So, we played the Eagles in the preseason, which we lost to them 21-20. to Then, the following week, we hosted the Chicago Bears in the preseason finale, and we lost to them 21-20. to And then, this past Sunday, as you know, we lost to the New York Jets, but that was 31 to 30. So the Browns have lost every home game this season by one point. One point. How crazy is that? That's insane. But anyway, so there were actually a lot of Eagles fans at that preseason game when we hosted them. And I w- we're leaving, or me and my friends are, along with my friend's dad, we're walking back to the car after the game. And I go up to this Eagles fan, who I think was wearing a Super Bowl 52 champion shirt. And I say to him, 
thank you for taking down the evil empire in Super Bowl 52. Um, and we got into a whole conversation about it. I When we played the Eagles in week 11 of the 2020 season, I believe it was. Let me double check. I believe that was 2020. Uh, da, da, da. Da, 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 2020. Yes, week 11 of 2020. Um, there were Eagles fans in attendance, and I said the same thing to them. Thank you for taking down the Evil Empire in Super Bowl 52. And they, they're like, you're very welcome. So, actually, with that Super Bowl, I predicted the final score was going to be 44 to, yeah, 44-31. And the final score ended up being 41 to 33. So I was two points off on each side. Two. That's amazing. That's the best I've ever done. But anyway, so Super Bowl 52, I put the Eagles in the 2017 championship group. So that would be the Golden State Warriors who won the... Oh, nobody for the World Series. I don't care. I'm Houston. I'm not giving you credit for the World Series. I already went over that. And then who? Oh, and then of course the Stanley Cup champions, your Pittsburgh Penguins. They took out the Nashville Predators in six games. As a Penguins fan, I was worried that series was going the full seven games. Um, I was worried. But I also want it to go the full seven games because the Penguins have won all five of their Stanley Cups on the road. 1992, I believe it was, was the first one, was in Minnesota. 1993, in Chicago. 2009, in Detroit. 2016, in San Jose. 2017, in Nashville. Okay, so... It was Eagles, it was nobody for the World Series, it was the Penguins, and the Warriors. Okay, 2016. That was 28-3, so the Patriots. With the Cavaliers, because we came back from a 3-1 deficit to defeat the Golden State Warriors. We Golden State, we will never let you live that down. Never, never, never. You blew a 3-1 series lead. So, don't worry, Steph. I keep receipts. Don't you worry, Draymond. I keep receipts. Don't worry, Clay Thompson. I keep receipts. So, yeah. 2016 was the Patriots, the Cavaliers, the Chicago Cubs. Go, Cubs, go. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? Cut up. Cubs are gonna win today. Yeah, 2016 was kind of a fantastic year for me in terms of championships because Cleveland got brought home three championships in 2016. First was Steve A. Miocic when he defeated Fabrizio Verdum in the main event of UFC 198 in Curitiba, Brazil. Then the Lake Erie Monsters, now, now they're the Cleveland Monsters, they swept the Hershey Bears to win the Calder Cup and bring home the second championship. And then the Cleveland Cavaliers came back from a 3-1 deficit to beat the Golden State Warriors. So, and then of course the Chicago Cubs won the World Series. I've been a diehard Chicago Cubs fan since I was a little kid. Never been to Wrigley Field though. Um, so you had the Cubs, you had the Penguins, you had the Cavaliers, and you had the Patriots. So you get the idea. And then 2015, that was Super Bowl 50 with the Denver Broncos. So that was the Broncos, that was the Warriors, that was, oh, who won the World Series in 2015? Oh, the Kansas City Royals, and, who, and the Chicago Blackhawks. Um... That that Royals team in 2015, that was such a fun team to watch. I loved that team. Eric Hosmer, Alcides Escobar, Lorenzo Cain, um, Mike Moustakas, Salvador Perez.
Perez, um, let's see, Ben Zobrist, uh, no, Billy Butler was not there, um, Alex Gordon, yeah, I loved watching that Kansas City Royals team, they were, that bullpen was ridiculous, Wade Davis, Kelvin Herrera, and who was that middle guy, went Kelvin, the starter, Kelvin Herrera, then it was somebody, and then they went to that Wade Davis. I can't remember that middle guy. If you can remember, write his name down in the comments, because otherwise I'm I'm gonna go crazy. Um, but that's my general rule of thumb. But anyway, looking at some of these other matchups for week three. Um, we've got Cowboys Giants. I want to know, are the Giants a legit 2-0? Or are they like a paper tiger? I don't think we're going to find out the answer this week. Because they're playing the Dallas Cowboys with Cooper Rush. Granted, the Cowboys defeated the defending AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals. Whose offensive line looks like absolute shit. Which is hilarious because they spent like $70 million or whatever it was to go out and improve the offensive line. And it looks terrible. I, I Joe Burrow is getting the Andrew Luck treatment right now. The Bengals played the Jets this week. So, Cincinnati is currently favored by four and a half. The Jaguars play the Chargers. That was impressive by Jacksonville last week. Shutting out Indianapolis 24 to nothing. Maybe Doug Peterson is figuring it out with Trevor Lawrence and that Jaguars offense. Maybe the Jaguars are going to be a sneaky good team this season. And, oh man. The Chargers were so caught up in doing their high-octane, fast-paced, no-huddle offense that they didn't sub out Everett, who was clearly tired. And... and if that's the case, slow down. Make substitutions. I get it. You had Kansas City on the run, but no. Lions-Vikings. Will the real Minnesota Vikings please stand up? Because we got a really good showing from the Vikings in week one. 23 to... Yeah, 23-7. Justin Jefferson looked unstoppable. And then... This week, the Eagles just said, yeah, we don't care. And they they wrecked them. So, will the real Minnesota Vikings please stand up? Please stand up. And the Detroit Lions, they're always going to be a pesky team. Do I think they're going to be a playoff team this season? No. I think they need to improve at the quarterback position. But they're going to be a pesky team. I'm glad they're not in the AFC North with the Cleveland Browns. On that subject, though, I have thought about a hypothetical AFC North. The Minnesota Vikings, the Detroit Lions, the Indianapolis Colts, and the Cleveland Browns. So, yes, I'm, I'm kicking out Cincinnati. I'm kicking out... Actually, no, I would include Cincinnati. No, no. I would move Baltimore and Pittsburgh to the AFC East. Cincinnati would move, I guess, to the AFC South. So, what do you think? Indianapolis, Cleveland, Minnesota, Detroit. And I guess with the, the new AFC East would be the Jets, the Giants, the Bills, Jets, Giants, Bills, and, ooh, I'd have to think about that one. But anyway... So, Bills-Dolphins, I I cannot wait for that game on Sunday. Both teams are 2-0. Both teams clearly have the offense. This It's going to say a lot about either team. Especially if we get a blowout of one team over the other. But I think it's going to say more if this game comes down to the final man. That's going to tell us if a lot. Especially if the Dolphins are able to beat the Bills. Because that's going to tell us that, oh, 
Okay, Mike McDaniel actually has something here with Tua. Okay. Chiefs, Colts, not that interesting. Wow, the Chiefs are only favored by six and a half? Nah, that point spread should be more. Texans, Bears, Bears are only favored by two and a half? No, that point spread should be more. Ooh, Lovey Smith is playing his former team. That's kind of interesting. But, um, yeah. So, switching gears to the NBA now. As a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, I cannot wait for this season to start. It's going to be such a fun year. As a Cavs fan, I love what we did training for Donovan Mitchell. Because now, Darius Garland, it doesn't feel like he has to do everything for the Cavaliers in the final uh, two minutes or whatever it is. If the game is like a 98-93 type of game. Where it's like, Darius Garland, go score a bucket. Go set up another guy to score. Go play defense. Go do this. Go do that. He doesn't have to carry that burden anymore. Garland can be like, Donovan Mitchell, you can get your own shot. You can carry the offense for a little bit. You know. Like, with this offense... Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland can both go off for 30-plus points in their sleep. No problem. Jared Allen and Evan Mobley can each give you 15 to 20 points, no problem. And they both can give you 10-plus rebounds. Here's my biggest concern, though. It's that small forward position. Most likely, we're going to start Isaac Okoro at, that, at, that, at the three. Which, I like him defensively. And I get it. With the group that we're going to be bring, putting out on the floor, he doesn't have to be like a 20-point scorer. I get it. But he was so inconsistent last season. For example, my friend Chris and I, who you've seen um, on recent episodes of Step It Up, which we are planning on getting back to those, he and I went to an early season game against the Chicago Bulls in which we blew out Chicago. But... Isaac Okoro only got nine points in that game. And I know, that's an early season matchup. I get it. But it just felt like there were too many times where we needed Okoro to give us a little bit of something offensively. And he just couldn't give it to us. And that's, that's not good. That's not good enough. Not when you have to face small forwards like Kevin Durant. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Giannis Attentacumpo, Chris Middleton, Jimmy Butler. You know Atlanta's going to be tough. Chicago with DeMar DeRozan. So, like, these guys can eat, all put up, like, 25 to 30 points. No problem. And again, I get it. A Coral doesn't have to do that. I understand that. But by the same token... He needs to be a little bit more offensively developed. Again, I get it. He's meant to be more of a defensive guy and slow, try and slow these guys down. I understand that. Don't get me wrong. But I, it's not good enough. I need offense from him. Because otherwise, I I don't know how we can match up with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Kevin Durant, Jimmy Butler, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Chris Middleton, DeMar DeRozan. I, I don't know. It's really going to be tough. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Sports Room Talk Show. Thank you for tuning in. If you liked what you saw and you liked what you heard, punch that subscribe button like a UFC fighter and punch that like button. Chris and I will get back to doing a better job of doing more routine episodes of Step It Up. We're going to try and do those every Tuesday. Um, every Tuesday night, so be on the lookout for that. We're planning on doing a big Forbidden Door pay-per-view conversation. WWE versus AEW. We both made up our own cards. Um, 24 matches total. Two nights each. 12 matches per... 12 matches each night. We're not telling each other where the event is happening. 
We've told each other some of the matches. But we're, we haven't told each other, like, all the matches and if any of the matches are getting any stipulations or anything like that. So, be on the lookout for that. But I will see you next time on another episode of the Sports Room Talk Show.